Many, many years ago, or in the future, or like right now, the nearish futures past in a universe very much like our own, or or maybe maybe our universe, but not like our universe, more like uh, positioned perfectly atop a pristine plateau just a little southeast of Gravestown, a rather immodest abode bodes an ominous warning. Much like many other locations of interest in Navisgain, this house bears a secret worth investigating. But where is this secret? What is it? What can it tell us about our collective story of Navisgain? Let's find out together as we explore House Old Spanish 01. Welcome to episode 17 of the Untold Stories of Navisgain. In this series, we're going to explore and dissect the most interesting places in the default setting of Seven Days to Die. From mountaintop mansions to fortified factories, we're going to learn the stories of those who didn't make it. From the outside, you would be forgiven for assuming this house to be grander than it actually is. The isolated hilltop, the long driveway complete with dilapidated brick walls, the large patio that stretches most of the length of the house that just screams, yeah, we have money. Funny enough though, stepping inside is a little disappointing. A single bedroom, a single bathroom, a single couch, table, and kitchen, complete with a gaping hole in the ceiling. Such a waste of potential. The basement is stocked to the brim with barrels, many of which are tapped. Maybe this was some kind of getaway for a wealthy wine connoisseur, or just somebody's prosperous but simple retirement. Probably not. As we explore this basement, likely getting wine drunk and searching for anything else of interest, we'll find a literal hole in the wall. But something doesn't add up. Through this hole, we can see the floor is different, and it appears the room we're viewing doesn't fit within the room we're standing in. And there it is, a heavy vault door haphazardly hidden behind these hellacious spirits. Okay, wine isn't a spirit, I know, but I made up what's in the barrels anyway, so get off my- Moving a barrel and heaving the door open, we'll find a hefty trap door. Fortunately, it's also unlocked. We'll descend maybe 20 feet down a bright yellow ladder to find... another vault door. Adorned with an ominous red glow. This must be it. Opening this door, we'll find... <laughs> another vault door. Adorned with an ominous red glow. This must be it. Opening this vault door, we'll find... Opening this door, we'll find... Oh. It appears we've arrived. But what have we arrived at? We have another vault door to our right, and then another, and we'll find ourselves in a small room filled with ancient-looking computers. A ladder leads us up to some ceiling tiles that have fallen down, from which we can leap into the oversized ducts down here. We'll come to a ratty and rusted old stairwell, with more hazmat-suited horrors blocking our way at every turn. If we find a way around, or through them, we'll pass through another vault door into some sort of kitchen-slash-dining area. There isn't much left here to eat, but there are a couple of makeshift chemistry caches left on the tables. At the other end of this room, a gaping hole in the floor brings us down to a flickering light revealing several rows of now unused mattresses. Between those, the bathroom behind us, the lockers, and the scattered clothes, it's safe to assume that this was some sort of dorm or barracks of some kind. Flanking the couch are more of those goddamned vault doors. The one on the right is locked, so through the left we go into yet another eerily red-lit space. Ahead, we can see another open vault door, of course, hastily boarded up to very poorly block off a ladder leading up. To the right of that, though, it may be the reason for this entire underground labyrinth. Yet again, in Navisgain, we've stumbled across some sort of underground medical facility. A couple of desks decorated with screens and charts line one end of the room, wraparound cabinets and a relative abundance of supplies of all kinds line the other. 
In the middle of the room, three large ducts that seem to be the be-all and end-all of the rest of the ducts in this underground facility connect to a single large computational medical apparatus for a single hospital bed. This is starting to get a little ridiculous, right? I mean, just how many secret and strange medical experiment chambers are we going to find around here? Perhaps a more pressing question, uh, what's this one for? Was a cure to what would become the zombie disease also being sought here? If so, by whom? With what information we have of the rest of Navisgain, it would seem the people working and living down here in the end times were working toward figuring this zombie virus out, and in the process went through around three dozen subjects. But why did they all turn? It's clear they were taking every precaution available to them. They lived down here, clearly they were dedicated and committed, and it doesn't seem the resources available to them were their downfall either. So now we come to the inevitable final question. What the hell is this place? Let's go back over what we've discovered. A relatively simple yet deceptively opulent and isolated abode hides beneath it a small labyrinth of security measures, supplies, and mysterious medical equipment. The owner of said operation is unclear. The purpose of said operation is mostly unclear. Clearly, something went wrong at some point and those that inhabited this place were doomed to stay there in unrest forever. Sound familiar? To spell it out clearly, this scenario is near identical to what I've dubbed the Mountaintop Mansion and the Duke's Estate, owned and operated by Noah of the White River Settlement and the Duke of Navisgain, respectively. So is this a mysterious third party? Or perhaps another secret lab of one of our aforementioned main characters in this story we've cobbled together. Right now, my money's on the Duke. Here's why. While the big picture description of the three locations in question matches across the board, the similarities between the Duke's estate and this Spanish Sub Rosa are too many to ignore. I don't I don't think I'm using Sub Rosa entirely properly there, but it sounds cool, so we're gonna we're gonna roll with that. Like I just don't think it grammatically makes sense, you know, but like I it's it's Spanish. It, never mind. The Duke's estate is littered with security measures from the outside gate to the final tunnel checkpoints underground that lead to the hidden structure. His underground layer also has a bit more of a professional air to it, like more money was poured into it. It just seems a bit more put together, concrete and machinery wall to wall. Whereas Noah's underground facility, while larger, seems much more haphazard. It's really more of a lab in a cave, albeit a little more grandiose, perhaps. Not to mention, the desert climate also seems to be a bit more the Duke's speed. When I first came to this conclusion, I thought, maybe I was wrong about the other location. What if this is the Duke's estate? But honestly, it would come as no surprise if he owned multiple houses. I mean, he's the Duke. Based on the story we've kind of cobbled together so far about him, uh, that all tracks. But what's going on here, then? Because according to said story, the Duke is the bad guy and was possibly working with Higashi on perfecting this zombie virus. Well, there's no real evidence here to say that it was a cure being worked on. To be fair, the same can be said about Noah's mountaintop mansion facility. But here, the piles of bodies casually and callously tossed aside, the cramped and terrible conditions the people here were clearly living in, it all just adds up a bit too well for a villainous laboratory. Perhaps this was just another cog in the Higashi Duke machine, a more secluded location for more rigorous and experimental trials to be held without the need for a vague masking of intentions. What caused all the henchmen down here to pass away? What made those holes in the wall and the floor? What brought this place down? Well, there's no evidence to point toward anything. It could be they were attacked, but by whom? Perhaps zombies infiltrated the facility somehow, but how and where are those zombies now? Was one of the henchmen perhaps infected when they sealed themselves in? Unfortunately, we just can't know. That being the case, 
Maybe it would be best for us to not linger here. Uh, we'll make our way back into that side passage, tear down those hasty boards, and ascend the yellow ladder back to the surface to a hidden exit. So what do you think? Was this another sinister layer of the Dukes? Were heinous and unknown experiments performed here, piling up the bodies like crumpled up papers in a novelist's wastebasket? Or was this an unknown third party? Was this facility actually looking for a cure? I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. But until then, and until next time, thanks for watching.